Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you're watching us from. Uh, welcome back to Euro Cup. Uh, I'm Sven, I'm sitting here with Comic Drop. And Hi. Today, throwing us stats, we've got Beatrix. And you're here for game three of the day, which is game eight of the tournament, which is going to be Crime City Rollers against Roller Derby Toulouse. Um, so we're going to get into that in just a moment. We've got two minutes, so we're going to run through the roster. So I'm going to run you through the Crime City Rollers roster. They'll be playing today in the yellow jerseys. So they've got 0030 De Mauer, 0347 Hannah Pay, 04 Vilda, 07 Nasty, 112 Polytrauma, 12 Lightland, 14 Spino, 17 Ebba Metz, 299 Jasmine Sadri, 304 Nagan. 5356 five, Reggae, 90 Vanilla Slice, and 974 Astrid Comic. If you can take us through the Roller Derby Toulouse roster, please. So, for nothing to lose today, we will see 018 Kata, 06 Champagne, 19 Swinney, 191 Missy Hammer, 202 Billy the Kit, 2208 Tank, 28 Baboon, 49 Trash Panda, 64 Jacques Decker, 713 Alisteric. 7-2, Nina Backdraft. 7-4-7, seven, seven, Love, 934, Why So Serious? And 999, Kill Bull. Perfect. So that's going to be the rosters. Obviously, Royal Derby Toulouse will be playing in the black jerseys, black uniforms today. So, Comic, how do you think this is going to go? After we saw that Crime City performance this morning so strong against London, how do you think this game is going to play out? It is really hard to see because yesterday the predictor for Toulouse against Rainey was expecting 60 point difference and it was only 30 point difference for London versus crime this morning the predictor also didn't expect like a two point difference so I have really no idea I'm just here to enjoy the game <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say crime are going to come out with it wanting to um, really hit back after that devastating loss two points to London this morning yes. but we're going to get kicked off in just under 20 seconds I think with the first jam so let's see who we've got lined up on our S1 jam line so it's going to be Reggae for Crime City against Trash Panda for Toulouse. First jam underway. Once again, Crime City in the yellow top. Looks a bit green on our screen there, but it is definitely yellow. And it's Trash Panda out first with lead. Bit of a pile up in turn one. Reggae already with the star in hand. We have light lane in the pivot spot if the pass is needed. However, it is a power jam now to Crime City. Cut track called on Trash Panda. So Reggae still on that initial pass, so still held up. Minus one blocker in the Crime City wall here just to try and get some offense. They're going passive, letting Reggae just try and cut through on the turn one two apex reggae knocked to the outside they're going to be forced to recycle back to the pivot line yeah very nice recycling from sweeney uh, on toulouse side power jam comes to the end great bit of penalty kill from toulouse reggae still stuck on this initial pass trash panda i believe is on a scoring pass so any points picked up here will get added to the board. There has been a star pass on it. Is to light lane from Crime. And the two jammers are fighting. So Trash Panda is a little bit faster trying to score a few points. She tried to call the jam, forgot, forgetting that, you know, she had set a penalty and she's not entitled to do that anymore. Two minutes can be a long time when you're... It is. You're skating. And this is jam one, of course, so at the moment, both teams still probably finding their feet against each other right now. And we've already had a power jam, star pass. A few penalties also. Yeah, we'll just get uh, Sweeney there, I believe it was, going for a forearms right at the yes. end of the jam. And it's going to be a little of a power start, well, a pack advantage for Toulouse on that only second jam of this game and obviously after the first one uh, to lose with the lead 12 players four as we're going to get vanilla vanilla slice on our favorite jams of the weekend 
going up against, I believe that is Missy Hammer from yes, Toulouse. Is, yeah, I think Toulouse wants to send their fastest jammers and like make an impact right at the beginning of the game. They're, they're a team that is uh, known for playing with the other team's uh, moral and being really impactful. So we'll see what their strategy is for this game. Both jammers getting recycled all the way back to turn three entrance. The penalty box is now empty. So we're back to four and four. Crime now, they've got all four of theirs back, so they might get a chance here to get Finella Slice out. And we do, in fact, get Finella out for lead, but that took 40 seconds to get lead. There's a back block that has just been uh, called on Missy Hammer. This is a power jam for Crime City. So we'll see if uh, Final Slice can make more out of the power jam in this jam than the previous where Toulouse were so strong in the penalty kill. Final Slice though finds the way from outside to inside into turn one, calls off the jam. Brings us to an even game, 12 players, 12 with that eight point jam. But still a power start situation for crime. And they're gonna go for Ebba Met, another one of the strong jammers that they've had throughout this tournament. Slight pack advantage, four players, three right now as they're all huddled around our S1 jam line. Very nice offensive pack on Crime's side. And Sweeney's going back to the box for Toulouse. So it's definitely a, another pack advantage for Crime City. Ebba Met in amongst the pack now. Getting tangled up though with, can't see exactly which Toulouse blocker that is, but they're doing a great job of just sticking to Ebba Met and now railroading to the outside. It was, why so serious was that blocker doing that? Excellent work there to catch Ebba Metz. So Crime City only managed to get four in that one, as you say, with the power start. So yeah. it's going to be, I think, judging by these first few jams, it's going to be quite close, I think, to start off with until the teams work out how, like, what strategy is going to work against each other. We've seen Toulouse have got quite a strong yeah, defence exactly. so far against some of these Crime Jammers. And we've seen Toulouse adapting a lot during this tournament and like sometimes taking a few jams to learn about the opponent's strategy and how they play. So I'm sure it's going to be interesting. But we've got two new jammers, Hannah Pay for Crime City against Jack and Decker for Toulouse. Hannah Pay at the front at the moment just has one to beat, which I think is Lee Love. Pack's getting stretched yes. out. And Lilov is still out of play is yes. called, so Hannah Pay given lead and allowed to progress with the jam. And that's a penalty for Lilov. So two blockers from Toulouse are sitting. Ooh, third one. Oh no, sorry, it's the jammer. No, I think it was a mistake on the, on the on the board. Hannah Pay with that apex across the inside, completes a scoring pass. Oh, I thought the, the, the pivot was going back there to retrieve the star, but I think, yes, it was. So there was an incomplete star pass. We had Sweeney went back to recover the star to then complete the star pass. Remember, the star has to be passed hand to hand from jam at the pivot for it to count. However, the pivot can recover. And as long as they make that contact again, they can then resume the star pass. So we do now have Sweeney. We've seen very nice recycling from Toulouse also. Jack and Decker now just going to try and block to open up the pack for Sweeney, but Toulouse swarming all over Sweeney. Hannah Pay. Completes a third scoring pass now, just getting told to call it. So four scoring passes there, doubling the score for Crime City up to 32, taking that, stretching that leader 20 points now over Toulouse. 32 plays 12. 
Yeah, I think uh, the disadvantage for Toulouse right now is the penalty count. Toulouse is already on nine penalties. So one for the jammers, but the rest of it is for the blockers. And it's only jam four. And uh, Crime City is only on four penalties. So let's hope, you know, they don't continue with this penalty heavy kind of play. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it, especially against a team like Crime, if, if you've got a reduced blocker lineup, they're always going to be able to take advantage of that. Especially in the power start situation. And we've got Vanilla Slice. Vanilla Slice has picked up lead, but has been has been uh, passed by. So going to drop out of that jam. Call off zero zero, and we'll give a shout out to Bones Bearings. So Bones Bearings are the standard by which all other bearings are measured. Bones Bearings are skate rated, specifically designed for the application of skating, and they are our bench sponsors for this weekend. So thank you, Roller Bones for sponsoring our benches and obviously helping us make this all happen. As we go to a team timeout. Absolutely. I believe this is a Toulouse timeout. Yes, this is what I saw from the jam timer. So Toulouse also has been known, especially during this tournament, to take their timeout in a very like specific time. So either when um, the... They were being overpowered and they needed to calm down or to you know change the strategy or when the other team had built had built so much momentum that they wanted to like cut that momentum so i mean it's, it's it, the the most effective use of timeout is essentially when you know you do need to change the flow of the game if you yes. either need to rest your own players or you need to actually ice the other team a little bit get rid of their some of their momentum flow and I think we've seen that used effectively. There was some some really good ones used yes. yesterday. The kind of just you could see that the shift in the game was just after those timeouts. Exactly. Yes. But we're back in now. After the timeout, we'll see how this shakes out. Eber Metz for crime against Missy Hammer for Toulouse. No lead as of yet. Both jammers caught. I think there was a few whistles and yeah, Missy Hammer was trying yeah, to see if exactly. it was. If it was Missy that was getting the penalty. Missy Hammer reaching the front of the pack. Great move by Lightlane and Dykestalker to anticipate that and actually getting the catch. But Missy is through and has picked up a lead for Toulouse. So that their second lead, I guess, uh, from this game. But Eber Metz is out and running. Toulouse forced to cut off the jam before Eber can get round. Yeah, and also because they're one blocker short also, so they'll probably want to take that advantage and uh, try to get next lead more easily. Absolutely. And we'll give a quick shout out to our crew who are working the game, so all the announcers, volunteers, uh, officials, photographers, whatever you're doing to make this happen, thank you. And thank you also to Rydell for sponsoring the crew, advancing the sport of skating for 70 years. No matter your ring choice, Rydell has figure skates and roller skates you will love. And we're back in now on those particular skates with Hannah Pay for Crime City against Trash Panda for Toulouse. Very nice blocking from Sweeney Todd from Toulouse again. Oh, and I believe three blockers from Crime reporting to the box. So Trash Pan are going to get a, get a chance to take advantage of Vilda being queued. So we are going to say 0-4 for Crime City. Vilda being sent to the box as soon as a seat is made available, which again will only work in Trash Panda's favour. Oh, yes. I believe this was a bad block for Trash Panda. It's going to be... A a power jam for Crime City. So you can only take advantage of uh, the blockers in the box if you don't go at the box yourself. Yes, exactly. Well, this is really a, a team sport, you know. You're only as good as a jammer as, you know, your blocker. Your blockers can, you know, maintain the other jammer behind them, so. Hannah Pay, though, now has three blockers supporting against four from Toulouse. And a good knockout from, that was Sweeney, 
forcing the recycle of Hannah Pei all the way back to this crowd straight. Again, Sweeney with the knockout. Trash Panda is back to track and completes the scoring trip. Whereas Nasty is awarded a forearm, so again, small pack advantage for Toulouse. It's been quite, quite penalty heavy, you know. Trash Panda there, you could hear the crowd react to that one. Trash Panda dived to get those last points. So Toulouse took advantage of that one, brings the score a bit closer. 12 points picked up in the jam, and here's a replay of that dive at the end there by Trash Panda. 28 plays 35 now. Crime picking up three in the jam as we go to a quick official timeout. So yeah, Toulouse has gotten lead twice. So two 12-point jams and another jam with four points. So they, they're pretty efficient when they've got lead and they, well, don't report to the box, obviously. So even though obviously Trash Panda did go to the box on that one in the power jam, still yes. managed to pick up 12 and outscore Crime City in that jam. So again, brings it a bit closer. And we've still got 17, nearly 18 minutes of this uh, first period to play through. And then a second period. <laughs> and of course, we're looking out for um, the, the best players of the weekend for our MVP prizes from Crate and Skate Factory. So art prints, stickers and cards by Jukebox. Support a skater-run brand, so that's createandskatefactory.com, createandskatefactory.com. So thank you for sponsoring the tournament awards and the MVP prizes. So I'm not sure what this official timeout is regarding. Hopefully we will get some kind of indication. I can see the referees speaking with the bench coach from Crime. So we'll, we'll chalk it up to Royal Derby administration and uh, get ready for the next jam with Vanilla Slice for Crime against Jack and Decker. I see we're going to get on with the next jam. There seems to be still a bit of standing around time required. Yeah, I can see some officials in the penalty box. So maybe making sure that they've got their tallies right. Because I think it's been quite, you know... Yeah, they probably need new pencils in the penalty box with how many uh, they've been ticking off. Right now we're getting ready to go with Finilla Slice for Crime and Jack and Decker for Toulouse. Four and three pack advantage to Toulouse as this jam starts. Both jammers stuck, but Finella Slice moves to the outside, picks up a lead for Crime City. And Jacka Decker is right behind her. Avoids the block from Lightlin to make it out the pack. Oh, that was a, a very nice. So I think it was Ebba Metz coming out of the penalty box, and she managed to push Jacka Decker out of the track on her way back to the pack. And we've got Kata for Toulouse. I think the first time we've seen Kata done the jammer start so far. We're going against Eber Metz, again, one of the strong rotation jammers for crime this weekend. And once again, we get the familiar side, both jammers fighting against respective walls trying to find the way through. Eber Metz is two to beat. Why so serious again? Doing a good job of just being all over the jammer. And it's Eber Metz is through first. Picks up lead. Again, blocker penalty trouble for Toulouse with yeah. only a single blocker on track right now. Baboon trying to fight on her own. Had just been held up by that wall of yellow jerseys. 
starting to get some support as Toulouse's block has returned from the penalty box. But now it looks like I think we're going to go to a power yes. jam cut track. Picked up by Kata. So now Crime City can push that advantage even further with the power jam. Sweeney's back on track. So I know that Sweeney and Baboon are really strong together as blockers. And Ebert calls off the jam. Yeah. So Crime City will start with the power start going into jam 10. And a 20-point advantage now, 11 points picked up in that one. Yes. 49 players, 29. And, and zero for Toulouse. And we're still only half, we're less than halfway through this first period. And we are back. So Kata is still sitting in the box for Toulouse and we have Fennel Slice. Oh, very nice leg work on the inside to get that lead in less than 10 seconds for Crime City. Kata is now out of the box and rushing to the back of the pack to try and get out of initial as fast as possible. Very nice offense from the uh, Toulouse skaters. Meanwhile, at the front of the pack, Fennel Slice again putting on a demonstration of footwork. And that's a star pass on Toulouse's side. So Champagne, we've seen Champagne uh, jam quite a little bit because she's usually pivoting. She's a really strong jammer, but also a very, very good blocker. We've seen more and more of very strong pivots in teams recently. Yeah, I mean, it's, this morning, it's, it's the, the, the previous game, uh, the star passes and the tactics, you know, the, how fast the star passes were and knowing you've got that pivot there that can just switch the jammer instantaneously. I think it's such a, an important thing for teams to have these days as that kind of dual role player. But also not to take off your uh, jammer cover too fast. Yes, the, the reflex action of hearing yeah. the lead whistle and then uh, and pulling the star off has bitten a few teams. But we're in now with Hannah Pay and Trash Panda tight pack here yeah very nice blocking from Toulouse with only three blockers again Hannah Pay picks up the cut track so it's going to be Trash Panda with a power jam for Toulouse still four and four in the pack though so it still has the the, the hard job of th four or well, three crime blockers now yeah I guess it was a multiplayer block yeah for that was, Astrid yeah And Trash Panda picks up the lead. Third lead, I guess, for Toulouse. Again, very nice assist from Sweeney. Hannah Pay is out of the box now and just caught up in a tripod. But now we've got a power jam in favor of Crime City. It's a forearms penalty picked up by Trash Panda. Too bad because it was Toulouse's first power jam on that game. So Hannah Pay now gets a chance but is stuck behind that same tripod that caught Hannah coming out of the uh, the penalty box. And Lee Love pushing Anna P outside the track and recycling her at the very back of the pack. Trashbender is now back on track and unfortunately is the end of this jam. So I think Toulouse picked up three points in that jam. Yeah, 57 Crime City against Toulouse's 32. So not only are both teams fighting for every point, but they're also fighting for getting lead. We don't see as many like very quick leads. Yeah, pre in previous games I've seen of Crime, a few of the jammers just seemed unstoppable off the line, but Toulouse are doing really well at capturing the jammer off the line. And we're getting the situation like we've got right in front of us now. Eber Metz trying to find a way through. Like Missy Hammer also, though, getting held up against Helsinki. So we've seen here both the, the blocking liners are, are doing a good job of that initial capture, but it's Eber Metz takes the advantage, has lead now. And as we start to get 
some movement in and out of the penalty box again, which has been, I think, one of the stories so far of this game. I'm looking across at the penalty charts and I only see that Toulouse starting to fill up those squares on the penalty sheet. Yeah, but I think it's, it's still a bit balanced, so... Another scoring trip complete for Eber Metz. Missy caught yeah. looking for the star pass. Yeah, Champagne. Well, I think, yeah, Lightlin, you know, knew what was happening and was blocking Champagne in order to prevent that star pass. But the star pass was complete and Eber Metz shuts down the jam. Has the 12 point pick up though, 69 plays 32 now, still 10 and a half minutes of this first period to play through here in game eight of Euro Cup. So a little bird told me we've got 18 penalties for Toulouse and 11 penalties for crime. So I thought it was a little bit more balanced, but still more penalty heavy on Toulouse's side. We'll see how it plays. And we've got Kata for Toulouse against Vanilla Slice and it's Vanilla Slice that picks up lead making it a bit easier to get through the pack this time round. Oh, I think she got lead in less than 10 seconds the, the last time around, so pretty, pretty strong skater and, and jammer. And we've got a cut track from Kata, so we're going to go to Power Jam again in favour of Crime City. I think also it was Kata's second jam as a jammer and second you know lost opportunity i mean a penalty jam yeah. penalty and again it, you've got a um reduced lineup zero four versus three in the pack with vanilla slice jamming it's not the the position you'd want to be in as to lose on against a power jam but they're doing all right at the moment it's uh, they're not making it easy for vanilla slice to get through As the power jam comes to an end, Vanilla Slice goes for the apex jump and makes the landing. However, back block now by Kata, so straight back-to-back -back power jams for Vanilla Slice. And this will go into a power start in Crime City's favour. 16 points picked up in that jam for Vanilla Slice. So yeah, I was looking at the stats. It's been seven jammer penalties for Toulouse. So... And I mean, we've seen it before with Crime City that if they can get scoring in a power jam, that's where they can really do the damage. I mean, that was a 16-point yes. uh, jam there. We saw, uh, I think it was yesterday, that was the, the turning point in the game against Helsinki. It was a big power jam, and it just it changed the, their game for them at that point. But we know that Crime City are dangerous with a power jam. Um, they can switch on that offense just to you know, rack up the points whenever they need to. So we'll go to a team timeout now. This one called by Crime City. Yeah, but it might also benefit Toulouse. I guess this, is a, this, this would have been the right time for Toulouse to take a team timeout also. But it also ices the jammer sitting in the box for an extra minute. Um, so again, quite a clever play by Crime City here. And we'll give a shout out to 187 Killer Pads, often imitated, never duplicated, stick with the best. So there's a shot there of yeah. Kata. And when you say icing, it's like literally because it's freezing in the well, venue. Yes. <laughs> So Eber Met is going to be on the power start. Four on four in the pack, though. So let's see if Toulouse can kill this penalty enough for Kata to get out before Eber Met can do any damage. So we've got Sweeney, Champagne. Lilov, very, very strong blockers on Toulouse's side, but it's not enough right now. Sweeney doing a good job of catching Eber Met at the front, but Eber Met able to spin off, pick up lead. Kata is standing, ready to be released. And Power Jam comes to an end as Kata resumes play. And we've got another one of 
to lose his blockers in the box. Why so serious? So again, it's only a tripod to uh, try and uh, keep Abermetz inside the pack. Sweeney's been having a great game though in yeah. terms of engaging the jammers and, and like that there, that it's like a 60 foot recycle there from the apex of turn one, two. Yeah, I remember that it's, it's exactly the same game she was playing against uh, Rainy yesterday, like recycling three times in a row, the, the opposite jammer. It can get into your head. So Kata now at the front of the pack, just trying to push out Light Lane and Dyke Stoker. Now the out of play given, so Kata can get in and complete that initial trip. But the jam ends with uh, eight points on the board for Crime City, 93 plus 32. Only six and a half minutes left on this first period. And for a game that started off quite close, Crime City have really motored in this last kind of 10 minutes to push out the score. We've got, we've had 14 jams, only four leads for Toulouse also, so. And we're seeing one of the people that's done a lot of that damage in terms of the scoreline to uh, the Vanilla Slice up against Trash Panda. Trash Panda comes out on top, Vanilla Slice removes the start immediately. So yeah. Trash Panda now though, in the scoring trip, caught up behind that tripod of Vilda at the back. Able to get through though and start scoring on this pack. Vanilla Slice has, seems to have gone back to block now. Yeah, this is what I, I was I was confused. In fact, I think I think the star yeah. passes. Yeah, there's, there's been a star pass to nasty. number seven, Nasty. But it was not that obvious, right? Again, with the, some of these teams, the star passes are so quick and clever that, you know, they pass everyone by. In fact, no, so the, the star pass must have been completed because Vanilla Slice got the star back and resumed as jammer. So that star pass or incomplete star pass catching everyone out. But Toulouse able to now come back with a 16 point exactly. jam, which potentially their highest jam of the game so far. Yes. Yeah, and Crimes High has also been 16, so a good jam to get back into with four and a half minutes towards the half. 93 plus 48. And a slight pack advantage for Toulouse. And we're back to Hannah Pay and Jack and Decker. Jack and Decker up the front. It's four and four out of play call at the back, but Hannah Pay can get some speed up here to try another move on the pack. Jack and Decker knocked to the inside, run back by Lightlin. Hannah Pay tumbles into the tripod at the front and we see Nina backdraft pick up a high block, high block penalty still very nice work from Lilov Baboon and Champagne Another penalty, so Champagne is now joining Nina back, drafting the penalty box. So, see if Hannah Pay can take advantage of this. Remember, we still haven't got lead declared yet, and there we go, lead is declared. After Over a, a minute, <laughs> yes. The lead is declared, and the jam called off straight away, 0-0. Zero, zero. Ooh, but a very, very strong pack advantage for Crime. We've got three blockers from Toulouse in the box at the moment. And again, we've got Finilla Slice for crime against Kata from Toulouse. And as you say, strong pack advantage here. Only got Sweeney. Sweeney. Oh, Nina Bagdraf is now back on track. But trying to help Kata go through that wall. Not enough to stop Vanilla Slice, though, who does have lead now. Yeah. 
tries to step through but just catches feet and tumbles back up though and in again on this turn one I guess yeah the star pass was um, successful on Toulouse Toulouse's part it's hard to say Toulouse's part Champagne yeah. is now jamming well at least for a few seconds Before Vanilla Sky, oh. sorry, Vanilla Slice. It's hard to say. Caused the jam, and we've well, crime has reached the hundred, the hundred point threshold, a hundred and one point to forty-eight for Toulouse. I think there's an official review asked by Crime City. I think it's being used. Yeah, it's being used as a as timeout. timeout. Yeah. So, Doctor Steve will let opening the use. Crime City's official review this period is a timeout. Yeah, there's only one minute and 42 seconds remaining, so. We can see Toulouse regrouping also. And it's not long until we will be finding out who is going to be victorious in the Euro Cup and, of course, giving them the medals produced by Zero Waste Medals, the world's only Zero Waste Metal producer, www.wooden-metals.co.uk. So if, you, if you're if you doing events and you want to hand out medals in an equal way, get in touch with www.wooden-metals.co.uk. I can see the referees regrouping also. Now we're getting ready for Jam 18. Missy Hammer for Toulouse and I believe it's Ebermetz. Yep, Ebermetz for Crime. Toulouse with a pack advantage, four on three. Ooh, and very nice assist from Sweeney for Toulouse. Gives Missy Hammer the advantage and take the lead. Eber Met being caught up behind the Toulouse wall right now as Missy Hammer starts a first scoring trip. Only has Astrid to pass and picks up the first four. Again, very strong assist from Sweeney on Toulouse's part. Eber Met gets rolled to the outside again, having to reset. Whereas Missy Hammer now in on the second scoring trip for Toulouse in this jam. Stretching the pack, Missy Hammer fighting against Dyke Stalker. Dyke Stalker always seems to be the last block or the last line of defense that, that to catch the jammer and take them out as far as they can. Yeah, I think on Toulouse's side it's Lilov. Each team has got their, you know, stretcher, I would say. Big hit from Nasty. And that's a power jam for Toulouse. Ebermes is sitting in the penalty box. And Nasty picked up a penalty for that um, hit. It was a low block on um, Missy Hammer. So both Jammer and Pivot for Crime City missing right now on this power jam. And Toulouse call it, and it looks like we're going to get an official review called by to lose and they're going to use that as yeah, a timeout a, yeah so 13 seconds on the clock so as you were saying earlier it's to ice the uh, the opponent jammers but while they've got the slight advantage as well 12 points picked up in that jam 15 15 points in that jam so 101 plays 63 and we will get one more jam of this period and starting in a power start situation So Toulouse will want to do well in this jam to go into the half-time with a bit of momentum. Yeah, this and is also what they did yesterday against Rainy City. Like, they had a really tough, you know, couple or more jams, and then the last jam of the first period was really impactful for them, and so they could come back uh, at second period with you know, very more focused and with the energy they needed. Oh, so it looks like the crime yeah. jam has been released from the box. So we're gonna, it's not the power stop. We have got vanilla slice now. 
is going to be lining up. It's still a pack advantage for Toulouse going into this. So Vanilla Slice against Trash Panda, two very uh, quick jammers on each side. Trash Panda has a small advantage. He's fighting at the front of the pack. And picks up the high block on Dyke Stalker. So now power jam for Crime City, Vanilla Slice. Trying to find a way through that Toulouse wall. Has Astrid to beat. Switches to the inside, picks up lead and is through now in control of the jam for Crime City. Meanwhile, Nasty's returned the, to the uh, pack, so we're back to four on four. Back yeah. block picked up by Vanilla Slice, so... It's going to be a switch in... Uh power jamming and it's going to probably be at least 25 seconds of uh, of penalty time for Finella Slice because Trash Panda have all been standing for a little bit be before uh, Finella Slice yeah, exactly. sat down and we still have a little less than a minute to go on this two minute jam and once again we see yes. Dyke Stalk our last line of defence manages to roll Trash Panda at the outside and a little elbow from Nasty. I mean, legal elbow. <laughs> elbow within the limit oh, no, of the sport. shoulder, sorry, not elbow. Shoulder, there we go. <laughs> I was like, elbow is never legal. Vanilla Slice back to track now. Panda time expires. Trash Panda into the back of the pack. Yeah, and we could see Crimes... Uh, pack trying to uh, get Weiss as serious and keep her within their wall so that they would get the advantage of the pack. And those whistles signal that we're going into the half time. So seven points picked up in the jam for Crime City they're taking them to 108. Toulouse picked up two in that one taking them to 65. We've got two skaters from Toulouse. So I think it's Lilov and Champagne sitting in the box. So that will be a power start. Well, a pack advantage for Crime City on that second period. And Toulouse, I think, have got, already got a couple of blockers sitting on five, or a couple of players sitting on five penalties going into the half. So they're going to have to watch that in the second period because we've seen earlier in the in the weekend teams losing players in the second period because of the the penalties that they're accruing throughout the first period and that then changes the tactics all as the team um you know going into that second period because you, you can't put the lineups if you want if you've got if yeah. you've got lots of players on six or especially because those two players are, are really impactful so we've got nino backdraft and lee love who are two very strong skaters that have been skating with uh, Toulouse for a long time, so... So we're going to be going down trackside in just a moment, where I believe Loud and Queer is waiting with some Dock City players from this morning, so when they're ready, we will hand you down to the trackside. I can see some nodding. And we've got the nod, so we're going to throw down now to Loud and Queer at the track side, and we'll see you in the second period. So I'm here with Malis Babs and Patty from the block uh, from Dock City. Um, you've had all of your games this weekend. Uh, how did you feel coming out of that last game? We felt pretty good. We love playing Helsinki. We always have like a tight game against them. Uh, they. We had a penalty, some penalty problems uh, in the second half, so yeah, they, they, they deserve to win this game. Do you, do you feel like the penalties were what won them the game? Or, like, or do you think that they had some kind of gameplay which affected you predominantly? Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> but I was going to say that we have like the perfect rivalry against Helsinki because now we have played each other four times. And they got two wins, and we got two wins, and we really love playing them. And uh, I don't know, they were the better team today. So, so what you're saying is there will soon be a like fifth play, like a tiebreaker. 
Yes, I would like to see that. Just a tiebreaker game. Um, what was your proudest moment in that game or in this weekend? Like, was there a particular like standout moment or like a, a period of time as a team that was just amazing for you? Uh, we felt like our uh, game uh, yesterday against uh, uh, who did we play yesterday? Sorry. <laughs> La, uh, yeah, our, our second half uh, yesterday against Paris. We, we, we felt like we really stepped up as a team. We got more, more focused uh, and we really like pulled ourselves together and played a really strong second half and gained some more uh, points against them that we really enjoyed. Or I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, I, I've got to say, I always love watching you guys as a team, like so, so much. Um, and obviously we're now in kind of the end of the season. You've just had these three games, this very high level tournament. What do you now do with those three games, with that tournament as you head into the next season? How do you use that to prepare yourself? Yeah, but we were talking about that, like we're going to go home and watch some the games, other, other uh, games from other teams. <laughs> Thank you. And like, what do we do in this scenario? What are new strategies to to pick? Oh, to join, yeah, yeah. And we're like, like every time we play, it feels like we learn something new and we're like, so it's so exciting. So even if you lose, you learn something and that's great. And also, can I say something? I, we had a player called Fräulein Efrickles and she, <laughs> me too. And uh, she's, uh, she's been with Doc City since the beginning for 10 years. She never missed a game. She never missed a game and now she's pregnant. So I'm proud of us as a team because she's been like the backbone and the core of our team for so long. She's a like, good mental game, fun person. She's with us on the bench, but I feel proud of us that we managed to do this together, yeah. even though we miss her. <laughs> on the track. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you've, you've had like an amazing tournament and I think everyone's really, really loved uh, watching you. And now you get to relax and watch the rest of the games. Um, but I'm super excited to see that Helsinki rematch whenever it happens. And then maybe Fraulein will be back soon. Uh, another time. It'll be great. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much uh, for giving us your time. Thank you. Uh, we have just under 10 minutes of intermission and then we will come back for the second half of Crime City Rollers and Roller Derby Toulouse. Welcome back. This is game eight, Crime City Rollers versus Roller Derby Toulouse. So we're about to go into the second half. Crime City have got the lead of um, 108, plays 65. Uh, we're going to go back into this one uh, about 40 seconds time. So what's been the impressions from the first period there, Comic? Um, it's been really interesting. Um, I guess that what has been impacting both teams, but especially Toulouse, has been the penalty count. Um, so I've got a few stats. So the high, highest scoring jam for both teams has been 16 points. So we haven't seen like very 20, 24 point jams, which is interesting. And yeah, so we had penalty tr trouble with two skaters uh, on five penalties on Toulouse's side. Yeah, a couple of the Toulouse jammers are also sitting on a few penalties, but we're going to talk about that in a minute as we get back to track now. First jam of the second period, Vanilla Slice and Trash Panda, two of the stronger jammers that we've seen out today. Vanilla Slice already out and picks up a lead for Crime City. Trash Panda still caught up on that initial trip. And Lilov and Champagne are released from the penalty box. So the box is now empty. Both walls are going to be four on four. Wall crumbles and I think we're going to get a multiplayer. Yep, that's been called on uh, Dyke Stalker from Crime City for that engagement against Trash Panda. Trash Panda has Nagan and Nasty at the front just holding up and we get a forearms called on Nasty so I think that's Nasty uh, I think going on to five penalties yes for crime fifth penalty for Nasty Trash Panda tries the inside but it's Lightlin
and Lightland picked up the penalty for that, a low block, I believe. So now it's Toulouse with a pack advantage. Yeah, we've got Nagin fighting alone for crimes blockers. And this is a nor another scoring trip for Trashpenda. So to lose. Toulouse manages to score 12 points, eight uh, points for crime. So a good opening jam for both teams in terms of point scoring. However, there's still quite a lot of uh, back and forth the penalty box, which I think both want to avoid, especially to lose. That could um, add up to issues for them later on in this period if they keep having the block of trouble. And I believe we're going into an official timeout. Trashpanda is now on four penalties, which is also, you know, quite troubling because we were talking about blocker penalties, but if Toulouse, you know, loses one of their jammer and a strong one and a, and a quick one, that would that would definitely shift yeah, some of the strategies. Or we saw that in the last game where, with Dock City where Bowden you know, missed 20 minutes of the game because they were sat out on six penalties. And again, it's the kind of thing that the teams want to avoid. So we see if Toulouse changes their, you know, lineup rotation also. But we've got Eber Metz now for Crime City again. Missy Hammer for Toulouse. Four and four in the pack. So everyone's on track for now. And the pack is really tight. Lightland doing some good work, just trying to break up the tripod that was holding Ebba Metz. This time, Billy the Kit going to the penalty box to lose for the multiplayer block. Both teams, again, still struggling to to make some headway here as the whole pack's moved round. Yeah, it's been it's been over one minute and no lead has yet been awarded, right? And the pack's been moving because we're now on the crowd straight, um, opposite the S1 jammer and pivot lines. So we can see Sweeney, the pivot for Toulouse, getting at the front of the pack, maybe trying to get that star and, you know, get things moving and trying to score a few points. But Misuham is still blocked at the back of the pack. And Sweeney again. The last line defense against Eber Metz, but Eber Metz managed to keep the wheels inbounds and roll off that hit to pick up lead. After was, a minute and a half. Yeah, a minute and a half of both teams. And that's going to be draining for the Jammers. But I mean, this is only a few minutes into the, the second half, so they should still be relatively fresh. But uh, fresh. Now we get the forearms picked up by Eber Metz. And she'll probably be sitting, yeah, like two seconds be before the end of this jam. So that means more than a 25 second head start for Toulouse's jammer on the next jam. And we'll see if they can take advantage of this. But we'll give a shout out to S1. The S1 Lifer helmet, best fit plus best protection equals made for roller derby. Get a lifer, be a lifer. Check them out at shop.s1helmets.com. Official timeout. I guess sometimes th those really intense games can also get into the officials, you know, not game, but you know, they need to also make sure that all well, the penalties and all the points are I think accounted for. Yeah, especially when you know there's there's the, the potential for self-reporting and things. Got to make sure that the people who have sat are the ones that have actually received the penalties, etc. So Jacques Decker is uh, jamming and got the lead in a few seconds and, you know, making the most of this power start for Toulouse. I think it's the third time that, or, or fourth time only that she's been lined up in this game. But has picked up the cut tracks and now power jam is going to switch. Eber Metz had already come out of the box now. So that's a full minute, oh, full 30 seconds, sorry. It's not 2014. 
Full 30 seconds for Jackie de Kerr. But Eber Metz is once again stuck behind that Toulouse tripod. Got some offense coming up with Light Lynn trying to break up the uh, tripod. Dyke Stoker Dyke also Stoker, yes. coming in to help. Oh, so we were talking about the, the stretchers, so Dyke Stoker and Lilov, and they were like fighting each other also. But again, Toulouse doing a great job of just catching Eber Metz at the front and holding the position. Dyke Stoker being forced to bridge out with Champagne. Now Jack and Decker is back to track. Power jam over. And manages to burst through the pack. Eber Metz still stuck, uncharacteristically stuck. Normally we see Eber Metz slicing through these packs, but Jack and Decker is the one now making all the moves and picking up the points. Pack once again, compacted and stationary here, right in front of us on this crowd straight. Jack and Decker tries to step to the outside, but Dyke Stalker's there with the bump out of bounds. In and the, the jam timer, you know, takes everyone out of their misery. <laughs> <laughs> but again, Toulouse now starting to claw back some points, bridging yeah. that gap a little bit, 118 to crime against 85 to Toulouse. And there's still 23 minutes of, of time on that period clock left in this game as we've got Vanilla Slice lining up against Kata. Kata. Vanilla Slice again getting the lead in five, less than 10 seconds. It was five seconds this time. Definitely one of the outstanding jammers of this tournament. Vanilla Slice has, I mean, racked up some huge points for Crime City. And she managed to tiptoe on the inside and get four points and call out the jam. So a reply of, is that gonna be, is that two sets of eight, uh, two sets of four or is that just a single four, just four? For, no, just, um, just four. I, th I must have dreamt the other pass. <laughs> because she's so quick and, you know, so fast. No, no, that was only, well, only, you know. It Obviously was, I'm not skating, so. <laughs> but that was only one scoring pass. We've got Trash Panda against Hannah P. Trash Panda, again, displaying her leg work and trying to, you know, get her way on the outside, and it pays. Lead for Toulouse. And I think it's a penalty on Hannah P. Back block, going to the box of Spinner, who picked up the low block for the hit out on Trash Panda on the initial pass. So again, Toulouse on a power jam with the pack advantage and a great move by oh, Toulouse yes, there to open up the inside and get Trash Panda through. Champagne and Nina Bagdraft were on point with that assist. And why so serious takes Astrid out and rolls back, really dominating and controlling that pack. Some very intelligent blocking there by Why So Serious just to be able to stretch the pack out and, and again take Astrid out of play for that pass. Power jam over though. Hannah Pay on track and now pushing at the front out of play call. So Hannah Pay is released. I can see Toulouse's bench signaling that Trash Pennant needs to be, you know, ready to call. Waiting for the last minute because Wise Series is still uh, sitting in the box, so you don't want to call like too late, but you obviously don't want to call too early, and you want to your blocker to, you know, sit as many seconds as possible, so that they are released faster on the next jam. Going into jam six, so 120 points for Crime City 96, almost the 100 point um, threshold for Toulouse. Vanilla Slice again getting the lead for Crime City in under 10 seconds. That skater is amazing. And we've had a star pass to Sweeney for Toulouse. Is Vanilla Slice just bounces off Baboon. I think Baboon. That's a low block on low Baboon, block yes. Penalty for that hit, yeah. But she managed to 
you know, force Vanilla, Sky, uh, Vanilla Slice to call off the jam. Still, she got to score four points. So it takes us to a round 30 point difference, but still 19 Thank and a half minutes. My brain was, <laughs> was calculating also. And we're seeing Reggae, who we haven't really seen jam much in this game, but jammed a lot in the previous games against Jack and Decker, who we saw rack up some good points for Toulouse only a few jams ago. Yeah, this is the first time I've been reliably informed that Reggae has been on track this game. Well, say we did see Reggae jamming quite a few times in previous games, so we know Reggae is Ooh, a strong jammer. Very nice. Oh, that was a that was a shoulder from uh, Dyke St Dyke Stalker, Dyke Stalker on uh, Jack and Decker. And Jack and Decker unfortunately stepped back to track in front of another blocker, so has picked up the cut tracks. This is going to be a power jam crime. Reggae still to complete the initial pass. Nasty goes up in support, trying to open up the pack, now running back, so Lightlin bridging. Trying to keep Champagne at the back of the pack. And there's a clockwise block from Baboon. So now we're going all the way back around the track. Trying to, you know, play the clock. Power jam ends, so both jammers back in the pack now. Reggae trying to work past Nina Backdraft and Lee Love. Manages to get through. Meanwhile, Jack and Deck are just being recycled all the way back to the S1 pivot line. Oh, she was she was waiting for reggae and you know trying to block her, but reggae once again in the position of facing Lee Love and Nina Backdraft, who obviously appreciate the job they've just done there with a nice little hug at the end of that jam. Good work on holding up reggae. That was a full two-minute jam and only four points scored. And there was a power jam as part of that as well. So exactly, that's well it. done on the Toulouse blockers for being able to kill that as as efficiently. It's a four on three pack advantage to Crime City as we go into the next jam with Vanilla Slice and Kata. Vanilla Slice tries the outside, Kata trying the inside, but both snatched up in this pack. Vanilla Slice finds the way through, picks up the lead for Crime City. The box is now empty. Once again, we're seeing Dykestock was that last line of defense trying to hold up Kata. And holding up the star also. Now, I think we have had a foul out on Crime. Is it uh, Dykestock? Yes. Oh, no, sorry, it's Nasty, Nasty that's fouled out. And Dykestalker is on five penalties yep. at the moment. But there was four points picked up by Toulouse in that jam. 134 plays, 96 to Toulouse, um, sorry, by Crime. Oh, crime, yeah. So Toulouse still, you know, having to do a bit more work if they want to get past that century. <laughs> and we've got Hannah Pay for Crime and Trash Panic. Let's see if Trash Panic can get those points to, to break the 100 mark and has picked up lead for yeah, Toulouse. Yeah, very nice assist from Champagne, who managed to um, make way on the inside for her to do her usual leg work. Oh, very, very nice and very fast scoring point for Trash Panda again. Hannah Pay knocked to the inside. So even though Crime City had the blocker advantage for quite a bit of that there, Crime not be able to um, take advantage of it. Over now, we're back to the yeah, crunched up pack and we've had a star pass to Lightlin for crime so trash bender being recycled at the fact, end by Dyke Stalker it looks like it was it, it was illegal yeah. I guess yeah I can see Lightlin getting backwards 
Trash Panda tries to leap the apex but gets bumped inside. By Nagin. So but second time, it works. Hannah Pay is still the jammer then for Crime City, so the star being returned by Lightland to Hannah Pay. Trash Panda completing a fourth scoring, a third, sorry, scoring pass. It felt like a fourth one. Finally reaching that 100 point threshold. 11 points scored for Toulouse in that jam and none for Crime City. Only 27 point difference. And still a little less than half of this second period to go. It's exciting. And as we said, you know, Crime City have lost Nasty, who was one of their um, stronger blockers in their lineup. So some of their blockers are now going to be doing a little bit extra duty. So we'll see how that fares in this next 13 and a half minutes. With Ebba Metz jamming for Crime against Missy Hammer for Toulouse. No pack is called. Multiplayer block picked up by Jasmine Sadri, which releases Missy Hammer. And it looks like now we've had the star pass to Lightland. We've seen more scoring passes from Toulouse in that second period. So I think it was the fifth scoring jam for Toulouse. And three of them were in double digits. So I guess the halftime period was very beneficial for them. Well, we said if, if Toulouse can, um, can go into the... The, the, the half time on a high you know it, it'll, yes. it'll help the game in the second period as we get a timeout called by Crime City and they go back to the benches for a little bit of uh, tactical team talk and we'll talk about the benches sponsored by Soccer Punch Skate Shop and Rollerbones can you tell us a little bit more about those two companies so Sucker Punch the biggest roller derby shop in Europe fast shipping largest stock expert advice at the best price SuckerPunchSkateShop.com and roller bones. Roller bones, nitros, and turbos offer a superior grip and a roll that is second to none. Check them out at www.rollerbones.com. And we're getting ready now to set up after this timeout. So we'll see if there's been any tactical changes, any any what words of wisdom have been imparted on the teams, and if it changes the gameplay as we play out this last 13 minutes of this game. Eight of Euro Cup here in lovely Ermston near Manchester. And we've got Jack and Decker and Vanilla Slice. Ooh, getting very low. Vanilla Slice, who I'm being informed has a 100% lead percentage so far. In under 10 seconds. <laughs> One blocker apiece in the box, so only three in each wall. And both jammers finding it difficult to make those initial moves in this first 20 feet of track. We've got one back from Toulouse to make giving them the advantage. And Jack and Deck has taken that advantage. Once again, it's Dyke Stalker up the front. Ball string now holding Jack and Decker in place. Lightland takes a tumble and once again Dyke Stalker, last line of defence we've said time and time again just waiting for that out of play call as the pack gets stretched watching the refs here to see are we going to keep we've got two bridges holding in place Vanilla Slice held at the back look at that you know there's Dyke the Stalker not moving and like. there's the out of play call that gets us lead Jack and Decker. We jinxed it. We said 100% yeah. lead for Vanilla Slice, and look what happens. You should have known. I'm cursed. Every time I say something, the opposite happens. So. Can you say that I've never won the lottery, please? Oh, you've definitely never won the lottery. There we go. That's that sort of. <laughs> but I don't know if it only works with skaters. Probably. <gasps> so we're now Jack and Decker. On the scoring pass, Vanilla yes. Slice still held up on this initial pass, looking for Lightlin, I think, who is the pivot. And we know Lightlin's taken the star a few times already. 
Nez oh, you cursed it. You know, she almost managed to take it. but It looked like they went for the uh, disguise star pass, and it seemed to work. So Fenella Slice used that confusion to get through and complete the initial. Jack and Decker was in on yeah. the scoring pass, though. He's picked up at least an extra one on top of the four from the previous trip. Two picked up, so brings the score now an 18-point difference. Ooh. 134 plays, 116, 10 and a half minutes remaining in the game. So it's the third jam in a row that Crime didn't score any points. Ooh, that might sting. So Toulouse trying to mount this second half comeback. It's Hannah Pay for Crime Trash Panda for Toulouse. With Baboon on the offense as a blocker. Baboon just trying to break up that tripod of crime. Lightlin once again back on track for crime and getting in the way of Trash Panda up the front. Trash Panda breaks through, picks up the lead for Toulouse. And another apex on the inside for Trash Panda. And another apex jump, treating the crowd back to back. Apex leaps through the pack for the scoring. Hannah Pay is through though and is now scoring. But for Toulouse's, you know, two of the blockers are sitting in the box. So again, very, very strong work from Kilbull and, and Sweeney. Sweeney has been a standout blocker for Toulouse in this game. Just been all over offense, defense, whenever they've needed Sweeney. Sweeney's been there. And now Sweeney is there, assisted by Billy the Kit, just holding Hannah Pay at the front of the pack as Trash Panda starts a move. And Baboon back from the box, trying to crush that wall, but gives them a pack penalty. Look at this duo, Sweeney and Billy the Kid. Oh, that was amazing. They were, how long did they held, did they hold Hannah P for? Yeah, it was, At least it was, 15, 10 to 15 seconds? It, easily, uh, it was the entire turn uh, top. So look at that, 12 points picked up in the jam by Toulouse. Eight only picked up by Crime City. 142 plays, 128. Little by little, so that's four more points than crime. And only a 14-point difference right now. It's amazing because uh, crime and, and Toulouse met each other at Anarchy last April, and I think the point differential was 121. I think at this stage in the game, this is much closer than uh, most people would have predicted, especially given how well Crime City played this morning against London. Now, obviously, that was quite a hard game for them, so it may be, you know, it's taking something out of them. Yeah. But, uh, it, but that, I don't want to discredit... Pressure, of course. I don't want to discredit how well Toulouse have been blocking here as well, because shutting down, like, jammers like Eber Metz and Vanilla Slice isn't easy, given the way we've seen them play. And, you know, we've seen their Vanilla Slice frustrated a couple of jams ago. Exactly. And I know that um, Toulouse's goal was not necessarily to win against against Rainey yesterday or against Crime today because the uh, point differential in April for both teams was over 100 points. But their goal was to do better than this. And we've seen yesterday only 30 point difference against Rainey when the predictor announced 60 point difference. And today the, the predictor was 73 point difference. So if they maintain their momentum till the end, they're gonna do much better than that. But we're in now. Vanilla Slice and Kata jamming. Crime with the pack advantage for the moment. But it's not helping them too much. Vanilla Slice again being held up. Now managed to make the break for it. Goes around the outside of turn one. Picks up lead. That's the first lead in, uh, in five jams, I, I believe, for Crime City. And we've had a star pass to Champagne for Toulouse. 
And a team timeout called by Toulouse. So we'll thank STS, Sovereign Transport Services, for sponsoring our track this weekend. Transport company delivering goods throughout the UK and Europe. Warehouse and storage facilities available at the Liverpool Depot at sovereigntransport.com. And also giving us a line to use, the Pivot and Jam line brought to us by S1, durable, functional, stable, S1 Pro knee pads are built for roller derby. Check them out at shop.s1helmets.com. And I also want to have a big shout out to all the crews, all the volunteers, because they've been well, the officials, the announcers, but the volunteers have been amazing this weekend with us. And big shout out to Rydal, advancing the sport of skating for 70 years. No matter your ring choice, Rydal has figure skates and roll skates you will love. Oh, so. Uh, But we've got about well, seven minutes, 19, if you want to be exact, sitting on the period clock of game eight here at Euro Cup. Crime City Rollers versus Toulouse, 143 players, 128. And it looks like it's going to be Hannah Pay jamming for Crime City against Missy Hammer for Toulouse. We haven't seen Missy in, uh, in quite some time. I guess they, you know, because they, they, the previous jams and especially the first period was so heavy on jammer penalties for Toulouse, they wanted to have kind of a rotation. But it pays, and this is a lead for Mr. Hammer for Toulouse. So Hannah Pay has the star removed. And it'll be no surprise that it's Light Lynn for Crime wearing the pivot stripe. So we'll keep an eye on Light Lynn because. We've seen so many quick star passes, in fact. Yeah, there it is. There it is. But Leitlin is being held at the front of the pack by Kiel Bull. Rolled off and appeals for a cut track, but and it was given. So a great run back there to force that jammer penalty. So now Missy Hammer on the power jam, Dyke Stoker and Astrid to beat, rolls around for the four-point trip. I don't know if you can hear, but the, sh the crowd is shouting right now. Very nice footwork from Missy Hammer on the outside, managing to keep her balance, but then calling the jam. So it will be a very brief power start, but it's Light Lynn that is going to be starting as Jammer for Crime City from the box is standing now. So, as we say, the briefest of power starts. And Vanilla Slice is lined up with a pivot stripe, so we're probably going to see a star pass as soon as possible here. 143 points for Crime City, 136 for Royal Derby to lose only seven points. And a little over five minutes to play. And we've got Trash Panda, who had that power start, but now we've got Light Lane back to the track. Vanilla Slice, though, is blocking Trash Panda up the front. And I think Vanilla Slice picked up an out-of-play penalty. So, so no star pass for you. Yeah, Light Lane going to have to stay as the jammer for a little bit longer, and now stuck in a slow-moving tight pack, being held up at the back by that three wall. Very nice assist by Champagne. Allowing Trash Panda to go on her second, I guess, scoring pass, or first. Is it the first? It was the first. Time, you know, it moves differently here. And we're down to a three point game. Light lane still stuck in the pack. Vanilla Slice now returning from the box as Pivot. Asking for the star, gets the star from Light lane, so we've got the star pass. Trash Panda completes the game, and that's a lead change now to lose. Now one point in the lead is Vanilla Slice. Still has the initial pass to complete. Has uh, Weiss is serious to beat. Now is on a scoring trip. And Trash Panda calls the jam before Vanilla Slice can get through with an extra two points picked in the jam. Now Toulouse have got the three-point lead, 146 plays 143. Three minutes 45 remaining in the game. 
This has got a lot more exciting. Yes. I'm speechless. So Vanilla Slice has stayed on track with the Jammer Star going against Jack and Decker. Four on three, pack advantage to Crime City. Vanilla Slice trying to toe stop up the outside line. Spino just trying to open a bit of space, now having to draw back to the bridge. Vanilla Slice has the three to beat now, only two to beat at the front as Nina Backdraft has to drop back into the bridge again. We're looking for the out of play and Finilla Slice is released with the lead. But 30 seconds to take that lead. This is not normal. Jack and Decker though. It's now it's Jack and Decker's turn to be stuck in the pack. Has the star off. Champagne reaching for the star and this is a star pass confirmed for Toulouse. Yeah, Vanilla Slice was about to be recycled at the end by Baboon. Ooh, forcing Vanilla Slice to call off early and only and again, air quotes, scoring one point for Crime City. Still an advantage for Road Derby to lose by only two points, but we've you've seen, what was it this morning, Crime London? Only two point difference? Yeah, and it's, it's those, those two point games that keep us on the edge of the seat and to lose call a team timeout just to stop the clock at 2.28 on the period clock. Two points the difference. So Toulouse has uh, three skaters, so one that is on six penalties and two that are on five penalties. So yeah, Baboon is on six, and I think Lilov and Nina Bagdra Bagdraft are on five, so three very strong blockers. And Dyke Stalker on Crime, Crime City Rollers' side is on five. So, on six, sorry. And yeah. Dykestalk has been one of those key blockers yes. for Crime City, especially when the pack starts to get strung out. Dykestalk is always the one at the front who catches exactly. the jammer and holds them as long as they can. So we'll see if both teams have to re-line up or re-strategize to be able to win that game. And Crime City once again putting out Vanilla Slice, this time against Trash Panda. So two, again, very fast, very strong skaters. Trash Panda trying to go on the inside, but being held back by Crime City's pack. Vanilla Slice tries the inside. I don't know if that was clean over the line. Is gonna... By kill bull. So bull means bottom in French. <laughs> so killing bottom. <laughs> very apt name for that exactly. move as well. <laughs> As Vanilla Slice is taken all the way back to the S1 jam line, has to start again. Trash Panda though, skips through the pack, picks up the lead for Toulouse. So I think it's the only two lead that Vanilla Slice didn't get, and I, I think the other one was against Trash Panda again. And once again, we see Light Lane in the pivot strike, comes up to support, and Vanilla Slice has got the star off, has Sweeney to beat. Sweeney just been assisted at out of play call, so has to release Vanilla Slice. Trash Panda is in on a scoring trip and calls off the jam. One minute 20 left on the period clock. Ooh. And we got a timeout called by Crime City. One minute 15 to go. Four point difference, 144 for Crime. 148 for Roller Derby to lose. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing that I took my medicine this morning. And Vanilla Slice is all, is lined up again with the star. So how many jams in a row is this that we've had Vanilla Slice on track? Three. Three. I think this is the longest timeout ever. So I can't imagine what it is to be on that track. Yeah, this is going to be a tense one for both teams here with a four-point difference. Let's hope that the 
S1 jam line and pivot line, you know, motivates them. Then we've got four on three package advantage for crime, which they need right now. Finner slice takes a knee going through the pack. We've already got Dykestock are recycling. Missy Hammer all the way back to turn four. Neither Jamma can make a headway against the opposing uh, blocking trios. Finella Slice forced to recycle back the S1 jam line. And Toulouse's pack is now complete. Missy Hammer just has Dykestalk at a pass. Once again, the pack is strung out and Missy Hammer picks up lead as Lightlin picks up a direction of gameplay. So that's one less blocker for Crime. And it also takes the pivot off for any potential star pass from Vanilla Slice. And Dyke Stalker is on her sixth penalty, I guess. Oh, that's seventh penalty. So Dyke Stalker will be fouling out now. There's still 50 seconds left in the jam. So with 20, well, 50 seconds with, without a, well, yes. with one less blocker for Crime City. So the time on the period clock has run out. And Toulouse call the jam and end the game 144 to 156, the unofficial score. I can't wow. even. <laughs> if anybody had that on their predictions, you Call need us. to, you know, <laughs> yeah. We need to know the bingo, you know, lottery numbers right now because you're good. And there's the score made official 144 Crime City. But with an amazing second half comeback, Royal Derby to lose 156 to take the win. What an effort by Toulouse. And what a testament to how good the blocking of Toulouse has been in that second period to shut down Crime City's jammers and force Crime City in the end there to be running Vanilla Slice so hard in those last few jams. So let me, let me remind you, 121 point difference last April for those two teams in favor of Crime City. And the predictor today was saying around 73 point difference. This is epic roll derby. Absolutely phenomenal game to watch. If you're at home watching this, then these are the teams to be looking at in terms of how to defend against power jams, how to shut down powerful, fast jammers. Look at the way Toulouse have done that in this second half. We said even in the first, at the end of the first half, you know, Toulouse had to get the, the, the blocker penalties exactly. in check, and I think they did that enough to hold the track advantage when they needed it and just be able to control Crime City's uh, jammers when they needed to. And that's been the difference, I think, in the second period. Exactly, because the two skaters we were worried about, uh, Lilov and Nina Backdraft, didn't get any more penalties on that second period, so... Whereas you can see on Crime City's blocker penalties, you know, they were worked a lot harder. So we saw Nasty foul out, we saw Dyke Stalker foul out. Yes. And again, we said two of the strongest blockers that Crime City have had in this game, fouling out, and now Dyke Stalker was towards the very end of the game. But it still shows you how much just them being off the track opened up the, the spots for people like Trash Panda and Missy Hammer to get through and score those points. Yeah, and in terms of, of, of points, uh, Prime didn't get any chance to score a double-digit score in that second period. The only two pass, well, they got only two pass max in some of the jams. Yeah, which is a it means amazing defense, but so defense on Toulouse's side, but also like quick jammers on also on Toulouse's side who managed to get out of initial and force the call off early call off. So after that game, I'm going to go and have a seat and get my breath back. I'm not because I'm going to be in house on that on that next one. And who is next? Um, people sporting, I think, no, it's going to be Helsinki against Paris Roller Derby. So that's going to be another great game to watch. So stick around here for that. Um, I'm sure that'll be happening very soon here on this very feed. 
So make sure you're here for that, and we will see you very soon. But continue supporting the Euro Cup, continue watching, and we'll see you very soon. And thank you.